air through, your tongue just sticks there. So let's say it together and make sure that you say the word hot correctly. It's a hot one today. 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 Do you notice what's happening with this final word? It's T-O-D-A-Y, but do you hear today? Today? You might hear this in maybe uh, an audio that goes with your textbook. Today is a lovely day. But in daily conversation, we hardly ever pronounce this full word. Instead, you're going to cut out that O sound and just say t-day, t-day. Just make that T sound, t-day, today, today, today. Can you say that final word with me? Today, today, today. Okay, let's say this full sentence together, and I hope that you can use it in your daily conversations when you're having some small talk about the weather. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. It's a hot one today. All right, your turn. Go ahead. I want you to say it yourself out loud. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the next one. The sixth most important or most used sentence in English, according to me, is you got to try it. You got to try it. This is something that is commonly used when someone is suggesting something or maybe they're telling you about a new restaurant or a new drink or some experience that they've had and they want you to also do it. They might say, oh, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. And this word gotta is really common in daily conversation, but it's a reduction of a couple other verbs. So the full sentence could be, you have got to try it. But have got to is reduced to gotta. In fact, I have a full pronunciation lesson for this word. Gotta, have to, wanna, all of these kind of reductions. You can check out the link up here to get some more detailed pronunciation for that word and also how to use it. But let's talk about this sentence, you gotta try it. You gotta, gotta. Do you notice that the middle of this word doesn't sound like gotta? with a T. Instead, it sounds like a D. This is going to be similar to the word we talked about earlier, pretty. Pretty good. Do you remember that from number one? Pretty good. Pretty good. Here, it's going to sound like god a uh, god god Just add a D in the middle, especially if you want to sound like an American English speaker. That's what we do. We add Ds in the middle of words all the time. So try to say those first two words with me. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta. All right, let's say this full sentence. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. Do you hear it with that T pronounced at the end? Well, now you are an expert at T's at the end of sentences and you know that that T is cut short. So let's try to say that together. Gotta try it. it. You can see my tongue at the top of my mouth. is just stopped there. There's no air coming out. So let's say that full sentence together and remember to say gotta and it, it, it. Are you ready? You gotta try it. You gotta try it. You gotta try it. All right, it's your turn. Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's go on to the next one. The seventh most common, most important, most useful expression, according to me, is Thanks, I appreciate it. Thanks, I appreciate it. There's a couple different ways to pronounce this, whether it's clear or a little bit less clear, but let's start with the first word. Thanks, thanks. Make sure that when you say the TH, your tongue is between your teeth and you're also feeling a little stream of air coming out. Thanks, thanks, thanks. We use this word all the time and you can use it by itself, but if you wanna really show your appreciation, you can add another sentence. Thanks, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Let's focus on that second part quickly. I appreciate, appreciate. Can you say that word with me? Appreciate, appreciate. Am I saying appreciate? Nope. Here, the T's cut out again. I appreciate it, it. Oh, that another T is gone. All those T's are gone, having a vacation, having a good time together. They're not in this sentence. So make sure that there's not air coming out of your mouth, finishing that T sound. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is the most clear way, I appreciate it, because you're saying the first part of that word, appreciate it appreciate it. Can we say this full part together clearly before we go on to the relaxed one? Thanks. 
I appreciate it. Thanks. I appreciate it. I hope you can repeat with me really quick. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, let's go on to the relaxed version. Let's imagine that someone does something pretty simple like open the door for you. You're carrying a lot of groceries and someone in front of you decides to be kind and holds the door open for you. You can say, thanks, appreciate it, appreciate it. What happened to I appreciate it? Well, those parts of the sentence are just gone. So you're gonna just start with the P sound, appreciate, appreciate it. So you can say this all together. Try to imitate it with me. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Let's say it together. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. I want to pause and I want to let you try to say this all together. Try to say it in that relaxed way. Thanks. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Excellent work. Let's go on to the next one. The eighth sentence is a response to thanks. I appreciate it. If you are the one holding the door for someone else and someone says to you, oh, thanks, appreciate it, what can you say in return? You don't want to just stand there and go, mm, it's a little bit awkward. <laughs> so one of the most common sentences that you could say is, no problem, no problem, no problem. You could say you're welcome, but it's a little bit strong maybe for this simple act of kindness. If you dropped your groceries and someone helped you to pick them up, you could say, oh, thanks so much, I appreciate it, you're welcome. That's fine because it's a little bit more effort, but one of the most common things to say is, no problem, no problem. So let's break this down. No problem, problem, problem. Let's focus on the middle of that word, problem, problem. <laughs> Here, your lips are just kind of smacking together a little bit. Blum. Blum. <laughs> that B and L together is the focus of this word. You want to make sure that you're pronouncing it correctly. So let's practice the word problem. Blum. Blum. <laughs> it looks a little bit funny, but don't worry about it. I hope that I hope that you're on the train right now and everyone around you is thinking, why is that guy saying problem, problem, problem? <laughs> you are improving your English, so who cares what they think? Let's say this together. No problem. Blum, blum. No problem. No problem. No problem. All right, I'm going to pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the next one. The ninth and the tenth expression are common ways to say goodbye. At the beginning of this lesson, we started with number one, some common introductions, some common ways to say hello, and then some common expressions used in conversation. And now we're finishing up the conversation. So you might say, See you later. See you later. This is the clearest way to say it. See you later. See you later. Let's practice this slowly and go word by word. See you. You later. Later. Here we have another T that's changed to a D. You don't say later. See you later. Americans would never say that. <laughs> so let's practice changing the T to a D. See you later. See you later. See you later. See you later. Later. Er, later. <laughs> I hope you can pronounce that with me. Now let's go on to a little more relaxed and maybe a more common version, especially because see you later is just a casual way to say goodbye, so you're most likely already going to be in a familiar situation. Let's change you to ya. See ya later. See ya. Later. That final word is the same, later, but the middle word, you, which is clearly pronounced, changes to ya. See ya later. See ya later. Can you say that with me? See ya later. 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 Okay, I'm going to pause and I want you to say this yourself. Go ahead. Great work. Let's go on to the final expression. The tenth most common, most useful, most important expression is let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Maybe someone asks you, do you want to go? Do you want to go? One of our earlier sentences. And then you talk a little bit and you say, hey, let's go. I want to eat. Let's go to that restaurant you mentioned. Let's go to the movies. Let's go. Let's go. So let's say this slowly together. I want you to imitate my voice. Try to say it slowly and clearly with me, and then we'll speed it up. Let's go. Let's go. When you say the T in the middle of the word let's, 
your tongue is just tapping the top of your mouth. Let's, let's, it's stopping up there and then going to the S sound. Let's go, let's go. Can you say that with me? Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, I'm gonna pause and I want you to say it by yourself. Go ahead. Excellent work. You used those pronunciation muscles. You imitated 10 valuable, important, common sentences in English. I hope that you'll use these sentences again and again so that you can really sound like a native speaker and also pronounce them like a native speaker. So now I have a question for you. In the comments below, let me know what's the weather like in your city today. You might say, I don't know. Or maybe you say, oh, it's a cold one today. It's a rainy one, unfortunately. I have to wear a rain jacket and an umbrella and I'm still getting wet. <laughs> Let me know what the weather's like in your city today and I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download my free ebook, Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. You'll learn what you need to do to speak confidently and fluently. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free lessons. Thanks so much. Bye.